I aim not only to honor my mother, but to tell a human story. Everything we learn from Lisa Marie Presley's posthumous memoir, From Here to the Great Unknown Book. For years after Elvis Presley died, his daughter Lisa Marie said her father would appear in her dreams. Lisa, curled up in the hamburger-shaped bed she loved as a child, him sitting beside her in astral conversation. I don't really believe they were dreams, I believe they were visitations. At the time of her death, Lisa Marie had been recording tapes in preparation to write her memoir. Per her wishes, her eldest daughter Riley Keough has helped finish it, annotating the transcribed tapes with her own reflections. Number 1. Lisa Marie never recovered from her father Elvis Presley's death. Lisa Marie, as the only child of Elvis and Priscilla, had what she admits was a spoiled childhood. The kind where a private jet was named in her honor, where she'd tear around Graceland in golf carts and toy with the paparazzi. Her bond with Elvis was intense, even primal. She believed he was a mercurial force that could influence the weather, for better and for worse. When she witnessed Elvis's fatal overdose on the bathroom floor in August 1977, Lisa Marie was nine. The experience would forever scar her. His death was a loss from which she would never recover. After the funeral, she sat with her father's body for hours, disassociating during the public outpouring of grief while, she says, having no access to her own. The sadness started at nine when he passed away, and then it never left, says Lisa Marie. Number two, Lisa Marie says she was molested by Priscilla's boyfriend and attempted suicide at 16. From ages 10 to 13, Lisa Marie says her mother's then boyfriend, the actor Michael Edwards, would come into her room at night. According to Riley, the alleged abuse contributed to her mother's lifelong feelings of shame and self-hatred, but Mike Edwards denies the claims. Shortly after Elvis' death, Priscilla began dating the actor Michael Edwards. In an interview with Playboy in 2003, Presley said Edwards would enter her room intoxicated and was sexually inappropriate with her. And this book also, From Here to the Great Unknown, Lisa repeated this allegation and stated that Edwards' sexual assaulted her starting in 1978. Edwards himself had previously admitted in his 1988 book Priscilla, Elvis and Me that he was sexually attracted to Lisa Marie. Also at 16, after Lisa Marie's first boyfriend, who she dated when she was 14 and he was 23, sold private photos of them to the tabloids, Lisa says she attempted suicide. Number 3. Lisa Marie thought she could fix Michael Jackson. She wanted to fix him, Riley shares, noting they both grew up in the glare of fame. She felt he was misunderstood, a feeling that she was very familiar with. When they got together, Lisa says Jackson told her he was a virgin. He was 34. I fell in love with him because he was normal. Lisa Marie and Michael would even drop her two kids, who called him Mimi, off at school together. I was actually so happy, she writes. I've never been that happy again. But mounting paranoia, drug use, conspired to end their marriage. Number 4. After Lisa Marie's son's suicide, she knew she didn't have long to live. She'd just become a mother to twin girls, but the painkillers she'd been given for the C-section birth led to a debilitating 80 pill per day opioid addiction and hospitalization when her heart stopped. Then, tragedy. Her 27-year-old son, Benjamin Keough, took his own life. Riley says, I couldn't imagine her living without my brother. It was too painful to cry. Lisa Marie Presley reveals she kept late son's body in her house for two months. She says it helped her become okay with laying him to rest after his sudden passing. Riley explains in the book that after Ben's death, her mom kept her brother's body on dry ice in her home for two months in a separate Casitas bedroom in their home in Los Angeles. The room he was kept in after his death had to be set at 55 degrees. Lisa Marie defended herself, writing, there is no law in the state of California that you have to bury someone immediately. She also revealed that her father's body was left in the home after he passed away, and she was able to spend some time with him before he was buried. Having my dad in the house after he died was incredibly helpful because I could go and spend time with him and talk to him, she wrote. Riley explained that it was really important for Lisa Marie to have ample time to say goodbye to him, the same way she'd done with her dad. Lisa said that one of the reasons Ben was in her home for two months because she couldn't decide where to bury him. Hawaii or Graceland. Ultimately, she decided on Graceland, and now she is buried beside him.
Lastly, Lisa shared, I really had no prototype to follow growing up. I had no family life, no home life to be an example, ever, no stability, she writes at one point. I guess I didn't really have a shot in hell. At her memorial service, Lisa's casket was laid across a golf cart. She was home back in her father's playground. Be sure to get your copy of Lisa Marie's memoir now. From here to the great unknown, a memoir.